Today we shall watch the story An Astrologer's Day by R K Narayan. R K Narayan was one of India's foremost writers and also part of the great trinity of Indian English writers along with Raja Rao and Mulk Rajanand who began writing in the 1930s. He wrote 15 novels, 6 short story collections, mythology and other prose. He also won a number of awards like the Filmfare Award, the Padma Vibhushan and the Padma Bhushan as well. The story has three main characters: the astrologer, the astrologer's customer and the astrologer's wife. The story begins at midday when the astrologer is seated under a tamarind tree in the town hall park. He spread out his professional equipment which consisted of a dozen kauri shells, a square piece of cloth with obscure mystic charts on it, a notebook and a bundle of palmyra writing. He wore a saffron turban around his head. His eyes sparkled with a sharp abnormal gleam and his forehead was covered with sacred ash and vermilion. This color combination never failed to attract people to him. A variety of tradesmen attracted people in the park. There were medicine sellers, sellers of stolen hardware and junk, magicians, and also an auctioneer of cheap cloth. Next to the astrologer was also a vendor of fried groundnuts who gave his wear a fancy name each day like Bombay ice cream, Delhi almond and Raja's delicacy. A lot of people who flocked to him also dallied before the astrologer. There was no municipal lighting in the region. A bewildering crisscross of light rays and moving shadows suited the astrologer because he was not a real astrologer. He was as much a stranger to the stars as were his innocent customers. He had left his ancestral home in the village many years ago without telling anyone. And although he was not a real astrologer, he had a working analysis of mankind's troubles like marriage, money and the tangles of human ties. He allowed the customers to speak for at least 10 minutes without saying anything. And then he would gaze at the customer's palm and say, "In many ways you are not getting the fullest results for your efforts." Most people agreed with him. Or he questioned, "Is there a woman in your family, maybe even a distant relative, who is not well disposed towards you?" You have an impetuous nature and a rough exterior. This endeared him to their hearts immediately because even the mildest of humans like to think that they have forbidding exterior. The nuts vendor blew out his flame and then the astrologer began to bundle up his things because now he was in darkness except for a little shaft of green light which strayed in from somewhere and touched the ground before him he was packing his bag when the green shaft of light was blotted out he looked up and saw a man standing before him he sensed a possible client and said you look so careworn it will do you good to sit down for a while and chat with me the other grumbled some vague reply The astrologer pressed his invitation and the man thrust his palm under his nose and said, "You call yourself an astrologer?" The astrologer felt challenged. He tilted the man's palm towards the green shaft of light and said, "Yours is a nature Oh, stop that," the man said. "Tell me something worthwhile." The astrologer was annoyed. I charge only 3 pies per question and what you get ought to be good enough for your money. At this, the man withdrew his arm, took out an anna and flung it to him saying, "I have some questions to ask." 
If I prove you are bluffing, you must return that Anna to me with interest. If you find my answer satisfactory, will you give me 5 rupees? No. Or will you give me 8 Annas? Alright, provided you give me twice as much if you are wrong, said the stranger. This pact was accepted after a little argument. The astrologer sent up a prayer to heaven as the other lit a cheroot. The astrologer caught a glimpse of his face by the matchlight. There was a pause. The man sat down, sucking his cheroot, puffing out. He sat there ruthlessly. The astrologer felt very uncomfortable. Here, take your Anna back. I am not used to such challenges. It is late for me today. He prepared to bundle up. The other man held his wrist and said, You can't get out of it now. You dragged me in while I was passing. The astrologer shivered in his grip. His voice shook and became faint. Leave me today. I will speak to you tomorrow. The other thrust his palm in his face and said, Challenge is challenge. Go on. The astrologer proceeded with his throat drying up. There is a woman. Stop, said the man. I don't want all that. Shall I succeed in my present search or not? Answer this and go. Otherwise, I will not let you go till you disgorge all your coins. The astrologer muttered a few incantations and replied, All right, I will speak. But will you give me a rupee if what I say is convincing? Otherwise, I will not open my mouth and you may do what you like. After a good deal of haggling, the other man agreed. The astrologer said, you were left for dead. Am I right? Ah, tell me more. A knife has passed through you once, said the astrologer. Good fellow! What else? And then you were pushed into a well nearby in the field. You were left for dead. I should have been dead if some passerby had not chanced to peep into the well exclaimed the man, overwhelmed by enthusiasm. When shall I get at him? he asked, clenching his fist. In the next world, answered the astrologer. He died four months ago in a far-off town. You will never see any more of him. The other groaned on hearing it. The astrologer proceeded. Guru Nayak you know my name? said the other, taken aback. As I know all other things, Guru Nayak, listen carefully to what I have to say. Your village is two days journey due north of this town. Take the next train and be gone. I see once again great danger to your life if you go from home. He took out a pinch of sacred ash and held it out to him. Rub it on your forehead and go home. Never travel southward again and you will live to be a hundred. Why should I leave home again? The man said reflectively. I was only going away now and then to look for him and to choke out his life if I met him. Guru Nayak shook his head regretfully. He has escaped my hands. I hope at least he died as he deserved. Yes, said the astrologer. He was crushed under a lorry. Guru Nayak looked gratified to hear it. The place was deserted by the time the astrologer picked up his articles and put them into his bag. The green shaft was also gone leaving the place in darkness and silence. The stranger had gone off into the night, leaving the astrologer with a handful of coins. It was nearly midnight 
when the astrologer reached home. His wife was waiting for him at the door and demanded an explanation. He flung the coins at her and said, Count them. One man gave all that. Twelve and a half an hour, she said, counting. She was overjoyed. I can buy some jaggery and coconut tomorrow. The child has been asking for sweets for so many days now. I will prepare some nice stuff for her. The swine has cheated me. He promised me a rupee, said the astrologer. She looked up at him. You look worried. What is wrong? Nothing. After dinner, sitting on the pyol, he told her, Do you know a great load has gone from me today? I thought I had the blood of a man on my hands all these years. That was the reason why I ran away from home, settled here and married you. He is alive. She gasped. You tried to kill? Yes, in our village. When I was a silly youngster, we drank, gambled and quarrelled badly one day. Why think of it now? Time to sleep, he said, yawning, and stretched himself on the pure. Thus, R.K. Narayan presents to us a story with atmosphere, characterization, suspense and also a structure. The story ends with an incredible twist with a murdered man consulting his murderer about his revenge. Narayan is a master of irony and satire. And with that, we come to the end of the story, An Astrologer's Day by R.K. Narayan.